What's up YouTube, Georgia Silverhunter back and today we'll be doing a mixed coin roll hunt. As you can see in front of you, I've got a bunch of different denominations, some bank wrapped, some customer wrapped, all different kinds of wraps. This came from three different banks, a fifth third that was in a Kroger and two different Wells Fargo's. I was really excited that one of the Wells Fargo's that I haven't been to in a long time actually had two customer wrapped rolls of halves. But uh, we've got a lot of money here, $272.50. 750 in pennies, 75 in dimes, 20 in nickels, and 150 in quarters. And I've got a fun little story to tell you about what we have sitting right over here. So with that, let's jump into it. All right, well, I think I've decided to go ahead and start off with the nickels. I think mainly because it's got the fewest number of them, and it's been a while since I've hunted some nickels, so I'm excited to get into them. Um, I did want to stop here first, though, and talk about this album and these three coins that I have in front of you. Uh, while I was at that fifth third inside of a Kroger that I mentioned earlier, there was a guy at the coin machine with just tons and tons of coins that he was dropping in, and I was kind of sitting around waiting to see when he'd get done to check the return tray to see if he missed anything, but he was there for like 30 minutes dumping coins in, and I finally just decided I was going to go talk to him. He was probably like a 16 or 17-year-old kid. He said he got all this change from his grandmother. He did. I did ask him if it was a collection, and he said no, but he did have this little book that had some pennies in it, which we're going to look at, and these three coins kept getting ejected from, the, uh, from what he was dropping in, and so I asked him if I could take a look, and uh, I basically offered him a dollar for these. And he jumped at it because he said, well, it's only 16 cents, so I'm making out. But uh, as you can see right here, he did have a 1964, looks like a Denver, 90% dime. So we did score ourselves a 90% dime. He also had a 1945 Philly or nickel that the coin machine wouldn't take. And this guy looked a little weird looking, so I had to pick him up and look at him. But we've got ourselves, I think it's a 1943 Philly. I haven't put it under the scope yet. It is just a straight 1943 uh, steel scent. And it's just really corroded and really ugly. Um, but yeah, we got ourselves a steely out of that as well. So I paid a dollar for all three of those. And you can yell at me for kind of undercutting the actual value of this. But the kid thought I was just going to give him a penny, a nickel, and a dime for it. So when I asked him for a dollar... He was all too happy to give it to me. Now, the other thing is he had this and said, do I want this? Because I did tell him that I was a coin collector. And I said, well, I'd love to buy it from you. And uh, there's not a lot in here, but we do have some wheat pennies, at least on these first two pages from 1941 to 1958. Now, I haven't taken much of a look to look for varieties or anything like that, or to even make sure they're in the right slots. But uh, he handed this to me and I said, well, you want me to give you a couple of bucks for this? And he said, no, I could just keep it. So we scored 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 19 wheat pennies with the album for free. So I was happy to take that. And during this hunt, probably off camera, I will dig through these to see if there's anything special in there. I'm not anticipating anything, but thought it was a pretty cool pickup. So with all of that said, let's go ahead and get into some of these rolls, or at least one of these rolls, to see if anything cool is in here. And then, like most of my videos, I'll go off camera and just bring you guys in for the finds because with this many different denominations and this many coins to look through, uh, if I were to film everything, we'd be here for a very, very long time. And uh, I don't think anybody wants to watch a two-hour video. So really quickly, let me just see if anything old jumps out. I do have some new Buffalo nickels in there. There's a 68. And I will go back through these and give them a little bit closer look for the many, many varieties and errors that there are on the Jefferson Nickel. Now there's a 1941, so this would be considered our first find. It is a 41 Philly, so we'll go ahead and put that up here on the board. Now, I don't have my cheat sheet in front of me just yet. I do have a hunt guide in the description down below this video, so if you're interested in starting coin roll hunting yourself and you need something to get you started, I think that's a great resource. Make sure you check that out. Again, free to download and print out in the description down below. So nothing else too exciting in there. I'm going to go back through them. I'll bring you back in if we find anything interesting, and I will continue to plug away through these, and hopefully we find more than just this 1941. 
Well, we've gotten through five rolls, getting into number six, and I was just checking enders, and we've got ourselves what looks to be a 1940 here on the end, so let's get you up on the rack, and we'll open this one together. All right, here we go. Just checking for some silver in the middle, but right here on the end, we've got ourselves what appears to be a 1940 Philadelphia, so we missed our war nickels by two years, but we will take a 40s era nickel all day long. So very same roll, just a couple of nickels in, and I've already seen the obverse of this because it, it came up this way and I had to turn it over to see, but we've got a Denver on the back and we've got a 1949. So that's three 40s out of basically six rolls, which isn't bad for a nickel hunt. Now you can see up here, I do have my strike it rich with pocket change book open. So I'm, I'm using that whenever I come across something that I might want to get in and see some examples of what I'm looking for. And uh, again, if you're going to be a coin roll hunter, check this out. I've got it linked in the description down below, but it's a great resource for coin roll hunters. So we're on roll number eight, and uh, we've come across our next find for this little hunt. We've got ourselves, what is this, a 1951. Looks like a Philly. We're into roll number nine. We've got our next find, I don't know, about 10 nickels in. We have ourselves another 40s era nickel. This time we've got ourselves a 1946, and it is a Philadelphia. Now, 46 is a Henning nickel year, and if you're unfamiliar with those, uh, those were actually faked nickels, and they come in a couple of different years, 39, 44, 46, 47, and 53. So if you're not checking those years, make sure you are. Now, each one is a little bit different, but the general rule on them is that you'd be looking for a loop. I think it's right here. It's on this leg. I can't remember, but there's a little hole in the letter R, and there is a die crack that would be present kind of coming down somewhere in, uh, in, in between the uh, lettering and the top of the Monticello building, and I don't see that anywhere on this nickel. And then the last thing you'd want to check is the weight. The Henning nickels are typically 5.4 grams, 5.3 grams, and we are at five, well, really 4.9. So pretty safe to say this is just going to be a regular Jefferson nickel, but make sure if you find those years that I specified that you're double checking. Well, we are done with those 10 rolls and nickels. We had five finds, just a real quick recap, a 40, a 41, a 46, a 49, and a 51. I think next I'm gonna go ahead and get into the dimes, We'll do the pennies, then those couple of rolls of halves, and we'll wrap it up with the quarters, just simply because I, I typically find the most DDRs and D DDOs in those, and so uh, we'll save those for last. All right, so let's get into these dimes. So what I want to do here real quick with the uh, dimes is we're just going to get these open on camera. I may go back through and hunt them for the couple of little things you can find for dimes. Um, but I want to open one of kind of each wrap and see if we can get lucky and find us some silver. And we'll do that simply by edge hunting. So that was one type of wrap. And some of these had some writing on them that somebody had scratched out. It looks like some of them might have some account numbers on them. Like this one, I don't want to show the account number, but somebody wrote an account number on it. Um, and we'll do one bank wrapped roll as well. So this is my second type of wrap and these things don't want to come out. So we'll make a little bit of a mess here, but that's okay. So no silver there. Now, if you are new to coin roll hunting, the silver dimes are gonna kind of jump right out at you. They're gonna be a nice solid silvery edge. And the worst thing is that uh, typically, at least in my neck of the woods, when I find a super silvery edge, it often ends up being a Canadian dime and not a silver dime. So you, you kind of wanna make sure you check all those out um, when you do, you want to pull them out and not just assume. So this is our third type of wrap. This is the uh, moolah wrap from, I think, the dollar store. Let's see what we got here. So nothing there. And nothing there. All right, let's see, have we done this type of wrap? No, this is one of the newer value wraps. This is, these are the same ones that I use. We got a bunch of funky colored stuff in here. The 
he looks a little white. I think that's just going to be some wear. 19, 1996 Denver, so nothing there. And like I said, I'll go back through these with a little bit more discerning eye. And that might be it. I think that's it for the different types of wraps. Let's go ahead and do one bank wrapped roll and see how that works out. And then I'll go off uh, camera and, and hunt the rest and bring in if we find anything. So not seeing any silver there either. Lots of shiny stuff, probably some newer 22, 23s. Yeah, it looks like a 23, but nothing else there. All right, well, I'm going to go off camera from here. Hopefully, I'll bring you back in soon. If not, we're going to go ahead and jump into those pennies. So those dimes ended up being a bust, but uh, we're going to move on to the pennies, and I do have my little penny mat handy. Again, this is embedded in that document that I talked about in the... Uh, description down below this video, but I figured we would go ahead and get a roll or two open and see if we've got any wheat pennies or copper that jumps out at us. Um, again, we're not going to hunt right now for errors and varieties. I will go back and do that. So definitely have some copper. That was an 81 and a 69 and a 72. Let's see here. That's not copper. So we definitely have some copper in that one. Let's open one other type here. Maybe this guy. We've got copper on the end. So if you didn't know, copper starts in 1982 and everything before that is going to be copper. Your copper pennies are gonna weigh 3.1 grams where your zinc are gonna weigh about two and a half, 2.6 grams. And uh, 82 is a split year, so you might have to weigh them. So that was a 74 on the end. The 82 is a split year, so they do have some copper plated zinc 82s. That's copper, that's copper. Um, and uh, they do have some full copper ones. That's a 73. So I'm not seeing any wheat pennies in here. Uh, but that 82, you definitely want to check. You want to pull those if you're if you're not keeping your copper. Copper's down a little bit, but typically um, I find about two to two and 2.2 pounds in a box when I do pennies, and uh, that ends up being well worth more than the you know three or four dollars in pennies that it is that you pull out. Oh look at that, we got a 2009 right there. That is one of the formative year. I'm sorry, the, what is this one? It's the formative years one. Yeah, the 2009 Philly. There were four different designs for this guy. And there is a DDR on this one. Unfortunately, there's no DDR on that. We'll call that our first find of the pennies. But uh, yeah, so I'll definitely be pulling all my copper. We'll be hunting everything for varieties and errors. And I will bring you in anytime we find a wheat penny. So we got about $3.50 worth of pennies or seven rolls left, and we haven't found too much. We've got a lot of copper we've looked through. We've got a couple of little copper stunners and that one Lincoln that I showed you. A couple of just nicer zinc pennies that I might check my albums for. But we did come across actually two in a row here, right in the middle of, uh, I'm not sure what number roll it is. It's eight from the end. We came across a 1955 Denver. Now, I was hoping it was going to be a 55 Philly because that'd be a semi-key date. 55 Denver is not, but it's still a decent looking wheat scent. So first one on the hunt, we'll go ahead and put that up here as a keeper. And right behind it, we had what looks to be a 1991 Canadian copper scent. So there's a good old Queen Elizabeth. So first foreign on the hunt, we'll put that up here as well as a keeper. Well, as you can see, we've reached the end of those penny rolls, and it was really kind of a letdown. Uh, I brought you in for almost all of it. What you see here is what we did pull. We had that one Canadian, what I brought, which I brought you in for. I did misspeak about this 55 Denver. I actually had my cheat sheet up, and I was looking at the Jefferson Nichols. So uh, the 55 Philly would not have been a semi-key date. But the 1955 Philly does have a double die obverse on the penny that can be worth a lot of money in really good condition. So... I always get excited when I find 55s because it gives you that opportunity to look for that double die obverse. Now, we did get four of the um, 2009 commemorative pennies here. We got three of the formative years. We got one of the professional life. The formative years were all checked for the DDR. We didn't find it. We had two stunner coppers, which I will uh, hang on to. I actually roll that separately. And we got a fair amount of regular copper. So real quick, let's check out our copper weight, see what that's worth. Let me see if I can get these all loaded on the scale for you, and we'll get a weight. 
Well, here we have it, 281.2 grams, which I've already loaded into coin apps, and uh, copper today is at $4.10 a pound, so this is roughly $2.41 worth of copper that we have right here, and this is probably only about a buck 65, buck 75 in pennies, give or take. I haven't actually counted them up, but uh, not bad. I do hoard all my copper. And like I said, I do roll my red copper separately. So with that, we're going to go ahead, get in these two rolls of half dollars really quickly, and then jump into these quarters. Okay, so this should go pretty quickly. We had two rolls. This came from a Wells Fargo that I literally haven't been to in a long time because they've stopped being open on Saturdays. And when they said they had two rolls, I was excited to get them. And wow, look at that. Two silvers right off the rip. That's Is that going to be a third? No, that's just a 71. So this is why I love going into banks and finding like a customer roll, but just one or two or three, maybe four or five. Usually when I go into a bank and there's like a whole box or there's three or four or 500 worth, it's almost always a coin roll hunter's returns. But we got a 68 Denver here, 40% silver. That's just awesome. And there's one more right here, another 1968 Denver. So Really glad I stopped in there to pick these up. That's 240s without any effort. I will go through these for various uh, mint varieties and stuff here in just a second. Let's see if we get lucky here in roll number two. Let's check it out together. All right, we have more. One here and one here. Now I'm wishing they had had about 10 rolls like this. That would have been awesome. Let's see what we got. We've got ourselves a 1967 40 percenter. Put that one right there. And we've got one more right here. We've got a 1969. So the silver continues. And like I said, I love finding it like this because that's not hard to pluck silver from a couple of customer wrapped rolls. So uh, I'm going to go through these. I'll look for the, the handful of DDOs and, and uh, no FGs and things we always look for. If I don't find anything, we're going to go ahead and jump in to those quarters. All right, well, we've got 15 rolls of quarters left to hopefully turn this hunt around. I'm glad we found that silver in those half dollars because this was starting to look like a pretty uh, big bust for a hunt. I'm going to go ahead and open up like five of these rolls just to see if we can get lucky and find some silver. I'm going to randomly just pick some out of here. Um, I don't find a lot of silver quarters, so I'm not hopeful. But uh, I always do look for it, and I'm always excited when I do find it. Uh, let's do one of these. Now, one of the reasons I do love hunting quarters is there are lots of DDOs and DDRs and die chip errors that you can look for. And I do get, I do get a, a pretty good amount of those here in the Atlanta area. If you haven't been watching my quarter videos, it's worth going back and checking those out. Because I do try to cover under the microscope just about every error that's out there that I have found, and, and we talk about what those things are worth and uh, how much you can sell them for on eBay and all that kind of good stuff. Of course, the other big thing we're looking for is our San Francisco business strikes and our proofs, and of course, our W quarters, which have gotten really, really hard to find, especially with all the influx of coin roll hunters over the years. Um, let's see, let's do this last one here on the end. But, uh, and we're far enough away from them now that a lot of them have been plucked from existence. Uh, you know, the, the W quarters were only 2019 and 2020. And so that's far enough away now that people that know about them have been pulling them, but they're still getting found today. All right, well, no silver in those five rolls. I'm going to go through them. If I find anything interesting, I'll be sure to bring you in. When we're getting through those five rolls that I'd laid out. We just really finished getting through roll number two. It was one of the last few coins, but I thought I'd bring you in. I've got it here under the scope. It is a 2021 Philadelphia crossing the Delaware, and we have found one of the double die reverses that you can find down here in the cuff of George Washington's hand here. Let me zoom out on it if I can. Actually, I can't. It's as far out as we can zoom, but uh, right here you'll see we've got an extra little little cuff here. I'll pull up some screens uh, and throw them up here for you from Variety Vista to show you which DDR this is. And if I can find any eBay comps, I'll throw them up there as well. If I recall, this doesn't go for all that much money, but it is kind of something you should have on your list. They are kind of fun to find. I've only found four or five of them, and I've just started looking in the last probably six months or so. Uh, but uh, this was also found by Original Atog Coins, another YouTuber out there. He had the first... 
uh, first submission of one of these. So he is the founder of this one. And I always think it's neat when I find one. All right, bringing you guys in here. We're getting into the next roll. Not a big find. First time for me, though, in a coin roll hunt. 2024 Philly. This is one of the new, I guess that's Patsy Takamoto Minx. Uh, equal Opportunity to Education. I've seen a couple of these out and about when I was in Canada and up in Buffalo. Uh, but I never actually found it in a coin roll hunt. So I thought I would go ahead and pull it here for you guys to show that down here in Georgia, we are getting these in our rolls. This one's not in exceptionally good shape, but it is a first find for me. Again, not a big deal, just worth a quarter. All right, guys, well, I can hardly believe it. We are on those same five rolls. In roll number five, we have come across a West Point quarter. Now, based on how bad those pennies were and how little we found in the nickels, I, and honestly, it's been a while since I found a W. I'm kind of shocked that I found this. We've got that W, no V75 Privy, which that's only on the 2020. So we have ourselves a 2019 W. We've got the War in the Pacific, and it's been a while since I've priced these. I will go ahead and put an eBay comp up on the screen, but uh, I want to say the War in the Pacific, last I checked, was one of the more valuable ones. And I mean, this one's seen some circulation, but still probably a $15, $20 coin, if I'm guessing here. Possibly more. We'll see what eBay says. Well, the quarters went pretty fast, but honestly, for 15 rolls, we didn't do bad. So let's go through what I pulled real quick. We did come across a couple of 2011s and a couple of 2012s, and these are really low mintage uh, America the Beautiful quarters. Um, these are the ones past the state quarters. Uh, I'm going to check these against my albums and see if these are upgrades. If there are, I'll plug them in. I'm not going to do all that on camera because uh, it'll take a little while, and we didn't find too much to plug in there. So... I just wanted to show these were decent quality, and uh, like I said, if you're if you're a coin collector, those 2010s, 2011s, and 2012s are pretty tough to come by. So if you find them in decent condition, they're probably worth hanging on to. Now we did find three of the new 2024 Philly uh, Patsy Takamoto Mink. Now I am doing two series of quarter albums, and I have not found any of the 2024s yet. So I'm going to take the two nicest ones out of here, and those will go in my women's quarter book. And of course, the star of this entire hunt was the W, the War in the Pacific. Now, these things have become less valuable uh, since last time I looked them up. Uh, most recent sales on this guy have gone anywhere from about $10 to $15, but still not a bad haul for something that I paid a quarter for. So always happy to find those W quarters. And keep in mind, if you're a silver hunter, this thing's actually worth more than a silver quarter. So if you have the opportunity, you'd rather find 10 of those in a box than 10 silvers, unless you're just a silver hound. Uh, we did find two uh, Denver crossing, I'm sorry, not crossing the Delaware, but bicentennial quarters. There is a double die obverse on this guy that I've been looking for for four years and never found. We did have one Philly. Now, I do hang on to these and, and make rolls out of the nicest ones that I find, simply because there's a pretty good premium on these things on eBay when sold by the roll. So I do hang on to those. To recap, I'm going to skip the pennies because we didn't find too much to talk about. Just that 1955 Denver. Um, just a reminder from the beginning of the video, we picked up a couple of Coinstar or technically Coinstar finds. We did have a handful of decent looking nickels. And uh, the next star of the show and really the next largest value uh, for least amount of effort were these four 40% silvers we found in those two customer wrapped half dollar rolls. And at today's melt price, this is $16.51 worth of silver. So I'll take that all day long. We'll go ahead and drop this in the silver chest and we'll do a quick look at that real quick. It is literally starting to overflow. We have been on quite the just steady stream of silver and all of our hunts lately. So uh, let me grab that chest and show you what that looks like. And sorry guys, during the quarter wrap up, I totally missed this because I threw it back on the scale to have a look at it because I was trying to find a value on eBay for it and I could not. Most of the die chips on the hat were going for a couple of three bucks. There were lots of people selling ridiculous, you know, quarters for a thousand dollars, but you could tell they were scams. Uh, so this guy, I don't know what it would be priced at because I could not find an example out there, but always find... Happy to find that DDR, and you can even see it under this magnification right there on the bottom of the cuff. All right, well, here it is. Let's get this guy opened up and see how we're doing. As I said, we're, we're going to start overflowing here if the back half of the year is anywhere near as good as the front half was. 
here is our four 40% silvers that we found today. I did add the, I think it was like 11 or 12 silvers we found in our last hunt in there. So they're already in there. And we're going to go ahead and add the war nickel and the silver dime that we got from the guy at the coin star. We're going to add those in there as well. We'll go ahead and get that out of the way. I, and I didn't mention this in the video, but I did check the Lincoln Scent book. No errors or varieties in here, but it's always nice to have another book that, uh, you know, one day maybe we can fill up. If we ever fill up our, our typical Lincoln Scent books that we've been working on for quite some time. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know I enjoy making these kind of random coin roll hunts when we just get a lot of different change out here. Um, unfortunately, this was one that uh, it just wasn't, it didn't produce that, that much volume, but honestly, anytime I find some silver, I consider that a successful hunt. So if you enjoyed this one, drop on down below, leave me a comment, click that like button while you're down there. If you're new to the channel and you like coin roll hunts, make sure you do. Um, Make sure you do click on that subscribe button then click on that little bell and select all so you get notified each and every time I release a new video. It'd be really, really appreciated. And uh, special shout out to all my channel members. Thank you guys for supporting the channel each and every month. It really makes a difference. And uh, I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, with that, I hope you guys are all doing well. Take care and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.